I can't believe anyone had to study this, but yeah, lobsters feel pain. So do crabs. Incidentally, so do fish and octopi, but apparently no one will accept it. I am heartened to say that people have largely been bipartisan against making octopus farms. Our friends the octopi are traditionally extremely hard to actually farm and are usually taken from the wild. They're almost impossible to raise in a fish tank, but there has been some progress made and people want to start farming them. Now, I personally am highly against farming octopi, in part because I'm actually allergic to them, so I never really got to identify how delicious they were. If you are allergic to shellfish, you cannot eat octopi. They do, in fact, have a beak and have the same proteins that we see in other shellfish. If you're confused about the evolutionary tree between that, we can see that bivalves, so like clams and stuff, are both in mollusks. An octopus is kind of closer to a snail than you might think. Now, as for our aquatic friends feeling pain, it was determined that things like crabs actually process pain through their brain. So it might be a little bit confusing when we're thinking of some of these guys. I mean, crabs and shrimp, uh, they're pretty close to insects. They are not insects, but you might expect that they would be so primitive. Why would they really have an experience of pain? Oh, but they do. They need to protect their bodies. So things like hermit crabs will avoid shells that they were shocked in. They'll look for a different one. That is a bad shell over there. Now you might ask, why does it really matter? I mean, nature is pretty brutal as is, right? Well, we humans have kind of moved ourselves out of the natural world by starting farming operations. We have the capability to destroy an awful lot in an awfully short time. It has been argued, and I would argue too, that we have a responsibility to be stewards of the world and cause as little pain as possible in the process of existing. Now, I do hunt, and I try to only eat meat that I can put on the table myself, and that's a moral decision on if you are going to eat meat, you should be capable of seeing the process and making it. But I also think that we should reduce pain where we can, and that includes other methods of euthanizing our dinner before it ends up on our plate. Humans are quite adept at separating out what is like us, what we're familiar with, like cats and dogs, from other animals. I don't know how to tell you this, but if you're capable of creating less pain, you probably should. Now, I'm obliged to talk about what sentience means. Sentience is the capability of having an experience. I would say that all life is sentient, although many people would argue with that. There's lots of life forms, like bacteria, that are just programs, right? I am obliged to tell you about what sentience means. It's a capacity to have an experience. I would argue, and I'm a scientist, a biologist myself, that all life is sentient, because all life is capable of having an experience. Even bacteria can avoid damaging stimuli. We're just observing different levels of complexity. There are differences, clearly, between simple programs and very complicated programs, and that gets to a very weird place. It gets to the conversation of free will, and I would actually say we do have free will. Consciousness is a much more philosophical perspective, and no one can quite say what it is. It's a concept of self. Being able to identify yourself as separate from others, and many will say that babies are not technically conscious until they're about six months old when they can start seeing themselves in a mirror and recognizing it as self and not another baby. But fish can do that too. That was the original test to see if something is conscious, if it recognizes itself in a mirror. My cat can do that, but that's just because she was raised around mirrors. We're also getting to the very weird part in this timeline where people are endowing robots with the capacity to feel pain. Turns out it works best if you model a robotic brain around our spiking patterns. Yes, if we model our own brains, robots can avoid painful stimuli and even make moral judgments on those who cause pain, which I've covered before. Is it just complex programming? Probably. At what point do we differentiate it from ourselves, who are also very complex programs? We're in a very weird timeline right now. So what do you think? Should we start treating our shelled friends with more respect for their capacity to experience a world? Or is this just some tree hugger nonsense? I would love to hear your opinion.